Let me be your guide in this world of wild distillery Bon Homme and their eight new Nordic style gins, so you know where to start the next time you want to spoil yourself. Hi guys, and welcome to High on Gin. In the previous episode, I talked about uh, Wild Distillery Bon Homme and what I call their Haute Couture series of gin, the so-called uh, Wild series. Today, I want to take a closer look at the Ene series, that is a more affordable gin, but nevertheless a very, very interesting series of gin. And right now, we're talking about eight gins in total, so we have a lot to cover today. As master distiller, but also as a previous gourmet restaurant owner and as a sommelier, Henrik Nast has always been very interested in these very precise, balanced and defined expressions in a taste. Something towards this new Nordic kind of concept that is often described with words like purity, simplicity and freshness. And every single one of these agents here is based on this one here the Ene original dry gin. This very classic, super balanced, uh, light juniper centric uh, citrus gin created with seven ecological uh, botanicals, juniper, coriander seed, angelica, uh, licorice root, cinnamon, orange peel, and lemon peel. But to make a very good gin, you have to think of it almost as building a house. You have to think about the foundation. You have to think about the design, the symmetry, the functionality, so to speak. And it's actually harder than you think, what you would think. So let's take a closer look at the botanicals just once more time. There's seven botanicals in this one here. First, there was, there was the juniper, and that's of course the centerpiece of it all. This piney, resinous, woody, and slightly citrusy taste that defines the core of the gin. Then you have coriander seeds, the second most used botanical in gin, that is, that adds this floral, lavender kind of notes, but also gives this prolonged citrus feel to a gin. Angelica is the third most important botanicals in a gin, and that gives this earthy, woody, herbaceous foundation that really binds, but also enhances the other botanicals in a gin. Licorice roots, this gives, that gives this well, sense of sweetness and this hay-like woodiness that also adds uh, some depth and foundation to a gin. And then there was cinnamon that adds this complexity and this spiciness, the slight spiciness in it. And then orange peel that adds sweeter citrus notes and lemon peel that adds this more tart citrusy edge to a gin. So that's the building blocks in this gin here and then in, in all eight gins in total. This gin here is done as a London dry gin, meaning that it, among other things and requirements, are done you know, in one process without adding sugar or any artificial ingredients and no flavors or colors are added after the distillation. And making a London dry gin is not an easy task as the flavors from, you know, the from juniper, the coriander, the citrusy and the other botanicals, they come across in different stages of the distillation process. And that means that it is the skill and the judgment of the distiller to decide when he will make the cut to ensure that he only gets the desirable flavors, you know, that they are, they are collected in the final gin. And since we're dealing with natural ingredients here, it can, it can really differ from time to time. So you have to be very aware every time you make a batch. So if you love a very well-balanced, tight, detailed classic gin, you should go for this one here. It has become my go-to gin when I want to go back to the roots, so to speak, the roots of gin and have a top-notch gin and tonic with an Indian tonic but I love to add a little piece of lemon to this one, or to, uh, a little piece of lime, sorry, to this one, to build on the lightness uh, and the floral notes in this gin. 
And if you're a bit more bold, you should maybe go for this one, the Navy Strength version. The, the only difference between these two are that this one is you know, 40% ABV and this one is 57% ABV. And it makes a huge difference. It is much more brutal. It is much more in your face. Everything becomes much more defined, even more clear, and with this amazing alcohol boost. Uh, it has a different viscosity and it's, you can simply feel that it is even more packed with flavors. You know, it's like replacing your fine uh, Japanese kitchen knife with this cleaver. Uh, but I love that in, in this gin. Have this neat or have it with an aromatic tonic. So good. But then Henrik does something very interesting. He takes this one here, the Ene Original Dry Gin, and then he adds one extra ingredient. Uh, this extra flavor notes to the to the gin to give us a new give us new possibilities and new taste experiences. It's a bit like the uh, Monkey Forty Seven Distillers Cut uh, concept, where uh, uh, another botanical is added to the original gin. And as Henrik is a fan of this new Nordic uh, approach, where you complement the flavors and not overtake, not overpower, you should think of the next gins that I will explain uh, to you. Um, uh, think of them as, you know, this extra uh, used botanicals as a flavor note in the gin and not, you know, the only taste of the gin. As an example, the tomato uh, gin here is not a Campbell's tomato soup with an ABV, you know, but, you know, I'll get back to that in a minute. Henrik promised us that he will stay true and loyal to the foundation and the history of the gin, but at the same time play with us and show us what we can do by giving us these wow moments. Each of the additional botanical is carefully distilled separately, and then they are added to the original gin. And this, yes, to the clever viewer, this means that the, the remaining gins that I will talk about is no longer, can no longer be called a London dry gin, but a distilled gin. The first twist that Henrik does on top of this classic uh, gin here is done with these two here, uh, the hemp gin and the seabockthorn uh, gin. Both botanicals are local botanicals from Bonhomme. And hemp has this green touch, but it also has this, adds this buttery, oily, and musky flavor to the gin. So it tones down the citrus, uh, citrusy classic gin, uh, that is the base, and then it adds this roundness and this more mellow feeling, as if hemp is hogging the classic gin and calming it down a bit. Serve this with a Mediterranean tonic and some green asparagus as garnish, or build uh, on the oily, buttery touch and make a, a dirty martini. And no, you don't get high from this gym as, gym as, uh, as it does not contain any THC. You only get very, very excited about it. A C Bokthan, uh, on the other hand, is, is, uh, is adding this additional freshness and sharpness to the classic gin. Uh, the tartness from the seabockthorn is just, you know, a boost to the citrus element in the gin. It sharpens the gin. It makes it, you know, even more zingy. Add a couple of uh, fresh or frozen seabockthorn to your gin and tonic, and you will have this very fresh summer gin and tonic. And if you like a more uh, a sweeter a citrus feel or citrus notes from the oranges, uh, and, or if you're a fan of Negroni, this one uh, with the extra oranges is simply for you. The orange gin. Here Henrik has added both dried and fresh oranges to boost that element. The dry oranges are put in the pot still and the fresh ones are put in the vapor basket to steam the finer and more floral notes out of them. But notice the little label that is down here. It says limited version. And once this, verse, this batch is gone, it's gone. You know, new ones will come, new botanicals will be used and will be tested and released. But right now it is the uh, orange version that is, uh, that is on the market, but only for a shorter period of time. And from here, we take another turn, another turn towards the more bold flavors. This is the mint version. It has this very clear and very fresh taste of mint. But because it is built on this very uh, good and classic gin, it has more depth to it, it has more body. And although the mint is more present here than say in the hemp, 
um, uh, it, it never becomes too much. If you like this fresh taste of mojito, uh, this one, this one is simply for you. Add mint to the gin and tonic with Mediterranean tonic, add some mint leaves and then some uh, lime peel and you're good to go. And then we take another turn towards some even more unusual botanicals. And this is, as I said earlier, the tomato gin. It's not often seen. And people tend to think that it would only work as a red snapper, you know, the Bloody Mary version made with gin. And hey, it works very well as a red, in, a, in a red snapper. But the tomato gin here is not, as I said, a Campbell's tomato soup with an ABV, but has hints of tomato in it. It reminds me more of the smell in a greenhouse where you smell the tomatoes and the green stem. It is much more fresh and it's more green and inviting as you might think. You can really make an amazing gin and tonic with this gin by uh, using aromatic tonic and some fresh basil leaf in the drink. In the drink. Just think tomato and basil, how, how well they work together. And lastly, we have the espresso version. When you smell this one and when you taste this one, you instantly think of, think of, of smooth, velvety coffee. If you love coffee, this one is for you. As Henrik has used both dark roasted coffee beans that are put in the pot and the finer and more lightly roasted coffee beans that are put in the basket, he managed to get both the masculinity out of the coffee, but also the finer hazelnut notes and the sweetness out of it. Um, the gin is something between a classic gin and tonic and Kahlua on the other side, you know, with notes from both sides. Uh, of course, it's not as sweet and overpowering as Kahlua, but has more subtle and refined uh, notes in it with this fine dryness to it. Of course, you can have, you have to try this espresso martini where you add gin, coffee liqueur, uh, like Kahlua, and a shot of freshly brewed chilled espresso. It doesn't become any better than that. So guys, there you have it. An entire series of gin that will satisfy any gin lover, whether you love the more classic gins or the high powered ones, if you want to tone down the citrus element in the classic gin or have a, uh, uh, I mean, have a more subtle uh, gin with the hemp uh, gin here, or if you want to go the other way and turn up the citrus elements by getting the sea buck thorn here. Um, or if you want the more warm and embracing gin, maybe you should go for the limited orange version. Or you could be more bold and go for the mint version and make a mojito gin and tonic, or be even more unusual and try the tomato gin, or satisfy your, your love for gin and for coffee uh, by making this espresso version here. Whatever you choose, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Until next time.